everybody! Hello! Why am I shouting? It's on camera. <laughs> Disclaimer, Karen's wearing makeup, I'm not wearing makeup. Disclaimer, I went to yoga this morning. Disclaimer, I... Karen's. I don't always look like this, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm also sick! Wait, I don't want to be... Where are we putting? You're sick? Yes. I have my COC audition on Friday. <laughs> Get away from me. Thank you so much for watching Baker Street! Yay! Thank you! And thank you for liking it! And thank you for such incredibly warm, articulate responses, and... It's been quite overwhelming, and really lovely, after all of the work we put into it. Did we cry? Maybe. Maybe. So this is our Q&A video. We got a few questions in. We're gonna try and keep it short and sweet, which, like, for us is pretty much impossible. I'm verbose. Ha! I don't talk very much. I'm gonna talk over her most of the time. I'm not even gonna try. Okay. Yeah. Questions. Did you guys go to cinema school? No. No. <laughs> I one time took a class on cinema. It's a little misleading for us to say that we didn't go to cinema school. We went to theater school. We both studied acting. Classical acting. Which means acting for the stage. So all our classes were very much focused on text and movement. text, movement, voice. Um, um, what did we do for four years? Rolled around on the floor most. We carved our feelings into Play-Doh. Yeah. <laughs> Question two. Do we have any advice for aspiring filmmakers? <laughs> Don't do what we did. I'm going to quote Sports Night here. If I've learned one thing, it's that if you're dumb, surround yourself with smart people. And if you're smart, surround yourself with smart people who disagree with you. Okay. Other things about for aspiring filmmakers in bullet points. Get a good idea. Um... Bother people and bother people. Enough. Bother people. Ask everybody. 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 The queen. Surround yourself with people who know what they're doing when you don't know what you're doing. Ask for help. Don't scrimp on the script supervisor. Have an amazing AD. Give yourself a deadline. Deadlines. Deadlines are very good. Bite off more than you can chew. Having good food on set is really important, especially when you're not paying people because it keeps them happy. If you're not paying people, go for the food. Honestly, people love coffee. Yeah. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Have coffee everywhere. Right. Coffee. Or tea because like, I don't like coffee. Audio is important. Audio is important. <laughs> Number three, was it difficult to film? Scenes eating food. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I told Karen I had an answer for this and I'm really excited about the answer. <laughs> this is something I think about a lot. <laughs> um, in theater school, it was my mission, and in basically all of the plays I've done, it's my mission to find as many scenes as possible where it would be remotely conceivable that I would be eating in it, and then convince the director that I need to be eating in those scenes. And in theater, it's great, because you're doing a two and a half hour show, and so when it comes to that scene to eat, you're like, I actually could snack. It's not so great in film, because you're doing the same scene over and over and over again. But here's the thing, those plums, man. I had like two buckets full of them. Yeah, ate I ate plums. so many plums. <laughs> so the hardest thing with eating food on film, uh, aside from like enunciating so people can understand you, the yeah. hardest thing about eating on film is not getting sick of the food that you're eating. And continuity. And I got a lot of canker sores. So that's the hardest thing about eating. Number four. What's your fondest memory of filming? Oh goodness, that's hard. Okay. <laughs> My not strongest not memory, <laughs> this was a weird summer. It was really, <laughs> really hot in the daytime. And Karen's really house, like a lot of it we filmed on the third floor. Oh yeah. And heat rises. Oh boy, does heat rise. And then the nights, do you remember the nights? Were cold. Really, really, really cold. cold. Like, like. It was August. Single digits. Why is it cold at nighttime in August? You're it supposed was down to be able digits. to walk around basically in the same thing, like... You should be able to walk around in a bathing suit at night time. We needed fine. winter coats. We needed winter coats for this. No, we didn't need winter yes, coats. Yes, we did. That we needed, last... We needed mm. a nice, brisk fall jacket. We needed winter coats. The last scene we shot was the scene in the alleyway with the dead body. Oh, yeah. No, I was wearing... I was a in a scarf and a wool I, coat. I was wearing... When we weren't shooting, I was wearing a sweater underneath of my jacket. And our yeah. dead body was so cold that she was getting hypothermia. Oh, Ann Angelinda. Thank you. Love you. I love you so Make much. Make heart of my heart. Oh, whoo! Love. What do you remember? Um, I don't know. Everything? I need time to think. I wasn't prepared for that question. Question five, which we were asked <coughs> a lot. And many, many variations. Season, Season two? two? Here's the thing. 
Season two, <laughs> we want to happen. To be honest, like we could not do that again no. for what we did and ask people to do no. what we asked of them. So what we are doing is we're going to look into um, possibly distributing it with, through another company, looking for corporate sponsors, and yeah. potentially and doing another Indiegogo. And also maybe applying for some grants to see if we can get. Grants. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know about anything about writing grants. Um, that's my that's job. Karen's job. The other thing about season two, and I've mentioned this on Tumblr. Uh, so I don't know what that on was. Tumblr. She's so cute. No. I don't know her name. Um, the other thing about season two is we want to to really really involve the fandom. This yeah. has been my like, my pet pro my pet project of this pet project is I really want to do something that gets the fandom involved. So like we want to have like people's head cannons. We want people to contribute fic in in with the aim of creating a larger narrative that we introduce into the plot. Um, we have something else in the works that's a secret for now, but like hopefully in the next couple of days. <clears throat> We, we can't say something more say about something. it. Yeah. Um, but it's really exciting. Like, you guys will really like yeah, it. We're excited about we're, it. Yeah. Yeah. So, basically, we want to uh, galvanize the fandom into being as involved as possible in season two. So, those are the two main things that it rests on. Like, time, funding, and space, and fandom involvement. That being said, we, we really want to do, do it. Season two. Uh, probably about as much as you want to see a season two. We We'd want to really do it. like to do it this so. summer. Um, that would be great. I don't really have anything going on this summer. Guys, come on, let's do it this summer. Let's do it this summer. Six. Audio. <laughs> we know. Uh -huh. <laughs> Moving on. Seven. Where in Toronto did you film? Dundas Police Station. The one at Dundas and University? Um, University, yeah. Um, the one with the CN Tower in the background. Yeah. Because that was important for us to like get a really recognizable Toronto landmark in at least one shot. Um, we filmed on the Danforth. Both yeah. Of you and we filmed a ton of stuff at U of T. Yeah, we filmed well, like, at U of on the T. Outskirts. And the restaurant scene was at Cafe Nervosa in Yorkville, which is where Karen used to work. I used to work there. How did you How prepare, did you prepare for these roles? Funny story. It initially sprung from a desire to to work and to practice acting. The funny thing about that is, when we got into it, we spent ninety nine percent of our time producing with the logistics of putting together. A team. A, a team of people and organizing all of that took up so much more time than we anticipated that I think for I guess for me a lot of a lot of the preparation was really just like learning the lines it's that being said like Hannah wrote the character exactly and she like we've known each other since high school so she like she wrote them for us to play I wrote them for us to play and also we talked a lot a about their lot relationship about about what we wanted to address with their relationship, about where they were in their life, um, and about yeah. how they would affect each other. So I think we ended up prepping a lot more than we thought because we, we discussed it so much and before we before we even, even started. Went into how we would normally prepare, normally our focus well, my focus would be entirely on the script and I like to break down my script. I like to verb, which is when you take um, action words and you apply them to sentences or to beats, which I like are like to do that single thoughts. Well. I like to verb. I like to um, break I, down train of thought. Yeah. Beats. Beat it out. Um, research. Research. Yeah. I like to break down the arguments. So like knowing where your your thought process is going and where you're building to. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a newbie gooby theater school thing, but like taking those verbs that you've applied to your text and making actions to go with the verbs. Is this really boring? I feel like this is why actors don't talk about this in interviews. <laughs> I'm sorry. Whenever we were in a fight, we... Oh my god! The we, night, our wait, scenes wait, wait, were wait, better. Our scenes night, are better when we're not getting along. The night when... The, the body night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Karen wasn't even talking to me. <laughs> she was so angry with me. I don't even remember why. What because it was midnight. Brian was so angry because he couldn't get this one shot and he was kind of directing a lot of that anger at Karen and I was trying to stay like upbeat like hey this is great this is great guys this is gonna be so much fun and Karen was just like not having anything. Not having it. Every moment of my happiness just reminded Karen of her misery. Yeah that was good and yet the tension was there. The tension was there. What did you want to bring to the role? What did I want to bring to the role of Jane? Curse um, words. Curse words. Um, um 
Why? Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> please. Thank you. For Sherlock. I really wanted to bring to Sherlock um, the edge of immaturity that's sort of always present in a lot of incarnations of the character, but never fully explored because we usually meet him at a point in his life where he's at least doing what he loves and successful at it. And I wanted to explore um, a Sherlock who wasn't. She's a very, very strong-willed person who doesn't like being told what to do. And I think when you're young, I think because you haven't quite figured out yourself yet, um, that kind of feeling is just heightened. And I think it's like a very volatile point in life. I think early 20s... I mean, I'm biased because that's where I am in life, but I think early 20s Shock. is sort of a, a very volatile place to be. You're, you're thrown out of school, mm -hmm. but you don't really have any place to go. You're not anywhere settled. You're not sure what to do with your life. Yeah, and I think and I think a lot of people feel that way, and I think that like for someone like Sherlock, it's even more unsettling because everything with Sherlock is amplified. Sherlock wants this grand, adventurous life with mystery and... and and excitement, but how do you get that when you're a twenty-something living in Toronto on your sister's dime, right? Like, you're so beholden to other people. And I think I just want to like explore that frustration with Sherlock. because I wanted to bring that. I wanted to bring that youth and immaturity to her a lot. For Jane, I think I really wanted to. Uh, she comes. You meet her in the series when she's just a, a lot of shit is going on in her life. She's um. Like she's dropped, like she's been working to be a go to med school her whole life, and she's just dropped out to come to Toronto, as you all know because you watched the series. Um, but she, it, it's in, it's a, like it's a very transitional stage, and negotiating her insecurity with her confidence, similar, I guess it's similar to what Sherlock is doing, but she just goes about it in a different way. Um, and discovery of what she wants to be doing with her life. Um, very, like, early 20s, very, like, you know. Can I say with writing Jane? Yeah. I had a, a really, um, keen interest in, in exploring how she sees the world because Watson is, Watson is typically a very, like, um, moral influence on Sherlock. Very mm -hmm. much there to bring the empathy And you definitely, and I think you get that across. I hope so. And I think I lost with Jane, I wanted to see what Sherlock brought to Jane. And I think that Sherlock brings that kind of shade of grey. But I wanted to explore how Sherlock would alter Jane so that Jane comes to see that like, just, that that, that doesn't, that's not how the world works, that things uh, are but conversely, I think Jane also makes Sherlock attempts, accountable. Attempts to influence Sherlock and yeah, exactly oh, yeah. keep her oh, accountable. Yeah. And I think that's and that's the thing. I was like, I wanted to explore how they affect each other. Yeah. How did you make it differ from BBC Sherlock? We were very very conscious of this fact. Yes. Obviously, um, yeah. I'm a huge fan of BBC Sherlock. I uh, yeah, like it a lot. Um, Rewatching it, uh, great. Yeah. And. <laughs> When I first started writing it, there was a lot of overlap, and then I was like, you know, if we really want to do this, I want to see what we can do differently than the BBC. So we were very conscious of attempting not to pull scenes from the show, not to explore the same relationships, not to put them in the same circumstances, and yet maintain that same relationship. And I think, like, what... I really admire about the BBC Sherlock is the the pace of the dialogue and the um, quickness of thought. Yeah, the, like the, 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 the speed of the thought. I think that that's really like, and I think. So we definitely did take like, stuff there, of that. There are definitely things from it that we really were like, this works in this form. Like, let's keep this. And then there were. But yeah. we wanted to do a different thing. We, we wanted to do wanna, it differently. Yeah, we didn't want to do the same thing. Um, we also wanted to explore representation and sexuality and... Yeah, um, and I think that especially with having two women as the, it was really the lead roles, it's not, not only important to us to just like tell the story with Sherlock and Watson as women, but what that means with them being women. Yeah, so we, like social life yeah. in what work really, in school yes. and relationships, like in all of that. 
we really yeah it was important to us that we didn't we didn't want to just tell a story for the sake of telling a story we wanted to make sure that we had an agenda when telling that story but we were yeah doing it with a with a not like a, a message but with a mandate yeah so thank you guys so much yeah. for watching Bigger Street. Thank you for loving it so much. Thank you for the incredible feedback. Yeah. It was really lovely for us to hear after have because we were in post for so long, um, and like there were m moments when we were, we thought we just filmed for fourteen hours straight for eight days for no reason, and it was never going to be released. Like if you thought getting it from page to, screen. page to screen was hard, like getting it from the shooting stage onto your computers is just like. It's a lot. Filmmakers are going to watch this and be like, duh. But we didn't know. We didn't know. Now, now we know. know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Hearts. Hearts. There you go. <laughs>